I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Um, my father, Keith, was a professional footballer, though, for Charlton Athletic for 17 years in the 60s and 70s. And so I grew up around uh, the valley and, uh, and, and around the smell of the dressing room and watching my dad play. And all I ever wanted to do was follow in his footsteps. And um, I went through the, the usual route of school and district and county and played for England schoolboys when I was 15. And, and then there were several teams uh, interested in signing me um, as a professional. Um, and uh, I chose QPR because Terry Venables was the manager there and they were a top flight team. Um, and so at age 16, I'd, I'd done my GCSEs and, and I left school um, to become a pro. Um, and it was about that time where so I'd achieved the schoolboy dream, if you like. I'd achieved everything that the world says will make you happy, the, the fame, the, the, the potential fortune um, and the great career. Um, and yet, you know, I, I wasn't satisfied as I thought I would be because football was my God. If I played well, I was up. If I played bad, I was down. And um, so 18 months into becoming a professional footballer, um, it was just one Sunday evening, my mum just said, I'm popping along to the local church. My, my mum, not being a Christian, but just, just decided to go one night and I said, I'll keep you company. I was living at home at the time. Um, and I don't remember what the minister um, preached on that night, but he did say to me afterwards, uh, I have a youth meeting back at the house. Um, why don't you come along? And I pulled up that night to that uh, house. There's about half a dozen other young people my own age. I pulled up in a, in a nice car and I had that bit of money in my pocket and the career, I was in the in crowd, if you like. They, they weren't in the in crowd like I was and didn't have what I had. And yet when, um, when they spoke about Jesus Christ, when they prayed, there was a, a joy that they had and a reality that they had that, that I didn't. Um, so first of all was the kind of appeal and attraction of, of other Christians um, speaking about their relationship with Christ. And then I began to hear the gospel uh, from the Bible as the minister taught over the, the few weeks that I was going. And I realized then that my, my biggest uh, problem wasn't gaining the approval of the crowd on the Saturday or being uh, the best footballer in the world or seeking my satisfaction in that. It was that I needed to be in a right relationship with, with God. I was a sinner against the holy God and I deserved only judgment, and yet, because of his great grace, he provided salvation in his son, Jesus Christ, and the Lord granted me repentance and faith, and age 18, I, I was saved. Immediately, there was, uh, from the moment I was saved, there was a reorientation, football had been God, but now Christ was God, and, and I, I, I could enjoy football for what it was, a, a gift, and I was... Uh, a footballer, but I was a Christian first, and 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 I was in the world of football. So, perspective was was number one. Um, seeing all things under God, and and my job then to to be a good steward of the gifts that he's he'd given me um, in terms of my talents on the football field, and 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 literally playing to the glory of God, um, and and then to be a good witness in that. Um, and, and so I sort of uh, felt the responsibility of that straight away. Um, I was open with the guys straight away in the dressing room about my faith. And of course, that met with quite a bit of uh, ribbing, as you can imagine, uh, a group of men together. Um, you know, you live together for 10 months of the year on the field. Your, your character's laid bare. There's, there's not much that the guys don't know about each other. So there's, and, and being a Christian, it's something different and challenging to, to many. Uh, so there's a little bit of stick, but then I think they watched my life to see if somewhat, in their opinion, my uh, life matched my profession and of faith. And uh, I like to think that maybe there was something of that that they could see. And I had some quite amazing conversations with players over the years that you'd never think would ask about Christ. Um, I, I do know that some, uh, maybe a handful of players be, became Christians. Um Maybe the Lord used me in some way uh, to 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 help that, um, and so uh, yeah, I I, be, I began to see everything in light of of, of God and for His glory, and um, and I think as well is is for us to recognise that 
that sport, the, the danger is that, that sport is God, that football is God uh, to so many people. Um, and so we, as Christians, can sometimes push back from that and be sort of fearful of it. And I think we ought to be very aware of, you know, understanding that, you know, Christ comes first to church on a Sunday, Sunday football for kids and, and all of that if you're a Christian family. Um, you need to weigh those things very carefully. Um, but at the same time, that you can play uh, sport and see the gifts that God's given you as a sports person to, to honor him, to honor him through the wisdom uh, you display on the field in the way you play the game uh, and the skills that you have it. And that's something, you know, that I attempted to do. Um, and so to, to finish that, this answer, I guess, you know, in, as I, uh, I've read quite a lot on Eric Little and, and you know, we all know the, the, the Chariots of Fire movie and, and, you know, and the famous line, which was attributed to him. I don't know if he said it, but it sums up well, you know, that, that God made me for China, he said, for to be a missionary in China, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. And I, I can empathize with that as a Christian and a, a footballer. When, you know, when I played well, when I scored a goal that you know the hours and hours of practice you put in on on the training field when that all came together in in one moment of of, of perfection as it were there was a feeling of the pleasure of god and and therefore giving praise back to him well i i had a what almost 20 year career and then i retired in 2002 uh went straight into media work so kind of started again at another career um, and it was going really well. Um, you know, I, I worked my way up through the radio and onto the TV and, and with the BBC team there, I was sort of doing match of the day, match of the day two, football focus, going to World Cups, etc. And I was really enjoying it. Um, there was something in the back of my mind that, that said it wasn't going to be forever, however. Um, you know, it's something I could have continued doing. Um, but I would say around about 2006, Six, um, around about the time of the World Cup in, in, in Germany, when I was there with the BBC, um, you know, I was, I was reading the Word of God and I was, I was in the pastoral epistles uh, where Paul is exhorting Timothy to preach the Word for the sake of the next generation and for the future of Christianity. And, and as I was looking at the the, the the state of Christianity ac across the UK, um, maybe a, a, a slide away from what the true evangelicalism is, uh, the need for truth to be proclaimed boldly and compassionately. Um, something in me began to stir. It's like maybe I, and I, I hadn't never preached, um, but maybe I should do this. Um, and so I thought that, well, there's this internal feeling or, calling if you like i need to have that affirmed externally so i spoke to the leadership in my local church and they said well we recognize certain gifts in you we'll give you a chance to preach and so i began to preach and then i began to do some theological studies uh old and new testament basic studies at cambridge while i was still doing match of the day and and, and stuff like that um and, and and then that all came together as an internal call external affirmation and then this growing um, what I call like a joyful compulsion that, you know, not only when I, I preach the word of God, I feel this joy, but, I, but it's like, I must, I must do it. Um, and so, uh, that's when I decided, I said to my wife, I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give up the kind of second dream career and take a period of time to, um, prepare for church ministry, which I thought was right in doing some studies. You can, you can draw many parallels. I mean, and of course, the Bible speaks much on, you know, uses sporting analogies to the Christian life and also to Paul's instructions to, to Timothy, um, who, who was to be a pastor, um, that it requires discipline. You must be prepared for suffering. Um, you must persevere. Uh, all of these kind of things. Um, so I do, you know, I do see that certain parallels there, and even you know, so so my life as a as a professional sportsman, there's been those kind of elements there, 
that I think have helped me. I think in, even in doing the media in terms of um, in terms of communicating, in terms of co uh, connecting to people, in terms of um, being able to say things concisely or memorably. Um, it's not that preaching is about just this great oration. Of course, it's about uh, preaching the word of God, exposing the meaning of the text. Um, and applying it and, and praying that the Holy Spirit uh, would make it effective in the lives of people. So it is a supernatural event, surely, but um, we are given instruction in the scriptures of, of, of how we are to preach. And so I, I see those kind of uh, certain disciplines in, in my life that have gone before that have helped prepare me for this. And then I would even add uh, working in a team all my life, just the team aspect that you've got different people together from different nationalities and you've got to come together for a common cause and a common goal. Um, well, of course, you've got people in the church from all different backgrounds that are coming together, called by the one true God into this fellowship of faith uh, to work together. Um, and so then sacrificial love, sacrificial service, you see that on the, on the football field with the best of teams. Um, that's what you, you get uh, when and then individual uh, individuals shining through within that. So all of those things together, I think um, I see connections and, and, and preparation that the Lord has given me for, for this time now. And yet I would finally say that, you know, I've played in front of 100,000 people at, at Wembley and in front of millions on, on TV and the, the biggest of stadiums and against some of the great players, but but nothing quite compares to going up there on a Sunday, whether it's 25 people or 2,500 people and preaching God's word because eternity and heaven and hell hangs in the balance and you're dealing with people's souls and there's no greater privilege. To some extent in the early days, that's one of the reasons I moved to Canada uh, for my studies. I could have studied in the UK and, you know, I, I had some time at London Seminary, great seminary, started by Martin Lloyd-Jones back in the day and um, f phenomenal teachers there. And um, I mean, in, maybe in some ways uh, uh, I could have even got a better theological education had I had I stayed there. But um you know, even then, amongst the, the guys there, there was this, uh, I was Gavin Peacock, the footballer who was a Christian, and that, they obviously respected that, but we wanted to chat about football, and, and I love to do that. Um, but I just thought, coming away to Canada, where we, we were familiar with it anyway, in terms of we'd come here for holidays, etc. I said to my wife, what would it look like to come away to anonymity, where people will just, uh, we got, it'll be a test for us, but also when I, people will just know me for what I say, from the Bible, um, and they won't confuse that with Gavin Peacock, the footballer, or the or, or the or the BBC pundit, um, and uh, and so I think that th that was a good thing to do. I mean, the fact that we've then stayed um, and we're ten years in now um, means you know that I think it was right, and you know I'm one of the pastors at a church in Calgary now, and yet by God's grace. He's pushed me back out into a kind of global ministry where I do travel around the world and speak. And I, I do come back to the UK uh, at least a couple of times a year as churches invite me. Well, it's interesting. Um, I'd never say never because I never thought, you know, when I was at uh, the BBC in the early 2000s, that I would be giving it up and moving to a small mountain town in, in Canada. Um, and... Uh, and so, yeah, I would never say never. But from what I can see, uh, I'm in a solid evangelical reformed church here in, in Calgary. I preach and teach. I pastor an elder in the church. Um, I have this wider ministry. My two children now um, uh, are grown. and uh, My boys have been married for, for two years to a Canadian girl. They're members of our local church. They live in Calgary. Daughter just got married a couple of weeks ago, and they're in Calgary. So... The immediate family is putting down Canadian roots, uh, uh, but you never know. I do, I do miss England, and um, I miss the people. I feel very connected. I think that's one thing about, I think my football career and even the media is, you just felt connected to the country. Football so much part of the fab fabric of England, and then having been a footballer, played around up at Newcastle, down at Bournemouth, at Chelsea, and QPR, and all those teams is there's a connection with the people and. Um, miss the sense of humour a bit as well, 
Um, so I love to come back. I love to, you know, minister God's word when I'm over and, it, it, and spend a few weeks a year, certainly over in England. So the Lord only knows the future. But uh, I think one of the things that, you know, I, I say to, to, to young people is that you, you may make your plans, but God will direct your actions and it's right to plan and whatever. But see it under the sovereignty of God and hold these things lightly, uh, whether it's a career, whether it's a house, uh, whether whatever it's your possessions, you know, receive from the, the Lord, but but hold them hold them with a, an open hand and to say, Lord, these are yours. And if you want me to stay, I'll stay. If you want me to go, I'll go. If you want me to give them up, I will. And uh, I think that's so very important because that then is the heartbeat of hallowed be your name and, and your will be done.